What a beautiful day, you guys. We're just up the street from Ballard, over from Seattle, Washington. This is where Rad Power Bikes is headquartered. Been out on a ride today on one of the new Rad Power Bikes, Rad City 5 Plus. And there's a lot of differences. At first glance, it's like, oh, okay, you know, kind of looks similar to the older ones. But I've always really liked these bikes because they've got fenders, they've got this rear rack, which is now removable. They've got integrated lights for safety, adjustable angle stem. It's a pretty comfortable bike and it's it's very capable as well. But you might notice the first thing is really the battery pack, how they've, they've moved it forward and they've semi-integrated it into that down tube. It used to be right here next to the seat tube and it was just taking up some of that standover space, right? You might kick it a little bit more easily. I actually think, considering that the motor is back here about 8.8 .8 pounds, the battery about 7.3 pounds, it's actually lighter than the old battery, even though it's the same capacity. Moving it forward a little bit, the bike feels a little bit more balanced. We've still got a lot of the same features as before, but they're just, they're refined. If we look at this frame, it's a boxier. Right, we've still got this reinforcement gusset. It's really sturdy, but the, the head tube doesn't bulge out as much. It's just straight inch and an eighth, really clean and sleek. Kind of an understated aesthetic here. We've got gloss white with these kind of glossy metallic silver accents that come right through to that rack. I really like that. And you know, we've still got a 46 tooth chain ring. It's still got that aluminum alloy guide, which doubles as like a bash guard. We've got the slap guard back here, tires that have reflective stripes. They've actually got a puncture resistance casing, but now they are not K-Rad, Kenda kind of a collaboration. It's just pure Rad Power bikes, and the size has changed. So they're 27.5 by two inches. The old wheels were 26 inch, so they were a little bit smaller. They were slightly wider tires, but they had this checkerboard pattern. This is a lot smoother, quieter, more efficient. Okay, and you can see down here, having a larger wheel, it actually gives you a lower attack angle. It's a little bit smoother. It does raise the bike height just a little bit where the axles are, it raises that up. But having this lower standover height and actually a slightly shorter travel, this is a 60 millimeter travel on the suspension fork, whereas before it was 80 millimeters. So that, it kind of brings the front of the bike down. It changes the geometry. This thing is purpose built from the ground up. You can see where the, the wires are. Again, it's semi-internally routed right down here below the down tube. It's got this plastic shield that has several bolts, so it's not gonna just come off. I've seen some press fit designs from other companies. This really feels like it's sturdy, but it gives you access to these wires, which is important for doing service and stuff. I really appreciate that for a bike that's direct to consumer, you know, you, you might end up receiving this in a big box and kind of messing around with it more on your own in the future. And of course you save money doing that, but Rad Power Bikes has this mobile delivery service and they actually have several st actual storefronts. Like here in Seattle, there's one in San Diego. You can go in and you can test ride these things and get service firsthand if you need to. But if you have to rely on a bike shop or maybe a little bit of DIY, it's just nice that all of this is so accessible. Now one thing that's missing here are bottle cage bosses. Uh, normally I would see those like right here, but sometimes it interferes with the seat post and how low you can go and it, it introduces a little bit of probably structural degradation. And for a bike that they're really trying to get stiff with these extra reinforcement points, you know, you don't want this flexy feeling and, and it's tough to make like a wave full step through like this and still have it feel sturdy and have it feel kind of capable. Like the high step is gonna be a little bit more high performance. It is also a little bit larger. The reach is slightly longer. And of course the standover height and minimum saddle height is gonna be higher. This one has a longer seat post. It's 390 millimeters versus 350 here over on the step through. Both bikes are available in multiple geographies. We're here in the United States right now and that's where the most powerful motor is. So this is a brand new custom Rad Power bikes designed and produced planetary geared hub motor, 750 watt nominal. And they actually say the torque is 37% higher than before. And the motor's lighter than before. It was like 10 pounds before, now it's 8.8. .8. So I was saying before, you know, 7.3 pounds, 8.8. .8. The bike itself is about 64 and a half pounds, one pound heavier, and the price has gone up 17.99. Before it was 15.99. I think even before they kind of had to bump the price up a little bit. There's a lot of supply chain stuff going on in the world. And there are quite a few 
few improvements on this bike. So I feel like, okay, you know, you got a more powerful motor, you've got a sleeker battery pack, and then a little refinements here and there, tiny things that a lot of people might not notice. The stem before it was adjustable angle, but it was pushed a little bit further forward. The saddle before it looked a lot like this. It had the handle, but now it's, it's more fully sealed against water. So it's not gonna get spongy or kind of be squishing out water. We are in Seattle, right? So this thing's fully kitted to be rain water resistant. Everything, all the electronics, some of which are really custom now, they're all IP65 rated. That's ingress protection. And we've got a sealed headset and sealed cartridge bottom bracket as well. And that just means you're not gonna get creak, you're not gonna get rust. I really appreciate that. So coming back down here to the tires, again, safety. The white color to me, it gives you a, a bigger visual footprint. You're gonna be more noticeable. Having those reflective sidewalls, fantastic. It's, it's something that I, I really feel makes a difference in the city, but the lights are the next big step and I, I wanna power the bike on real quick and just show you what those look like. So if I press the power button here, look, R-A-D. Very cool, so it's like giving you some little bit of fun happening in the background. The light comes on automatically for safety. So in the rear, we have a Spinninga Solo. It's a single LED and might be a little tricky to see today because it's so bright out, but they've got these light pipes, big reflective surface, visible from many angles. The headlight, this thing is like 80 lumens and it's got a light ring, like a fancy sports car or something. And then in the middle, there's a lens. It is aimable. It's got this blade on top that's kind of a heat dissipation feature, I believe. And it's mounted here on top of the suspension fork. So you are gonna get a little bit more movement. I, it would be nice if it was up higher, but then again, you know, this is already kind of crowded. They got the display and everything down here. If you end up with one of their front baskets or trays, you are gonna get a little adapter and you'll be able to mount that to the basket. And then it's not gonna point where you steer. So there's there are a lot of considerations. As it is, it points where you steer. It works pretty well and it's a fancier light. It's kind of above average. If we come back up here to the display area, we've got a swept back handlebar, really ergonomic, that adjustable angle stem with several spacers. So you can really dial this in. If you're a shorter person, you could bring the stem down a little bit and then maybe angle it up and bring it back. You can take that, that seat really, really low, 27.2 millimeters on that seat post. They do sell suspension seat post options, which give you some comfort, kind of combines with the fork. But then you, you add a few extra inches there in terms of the minimum saddle height. We do have lockout still on that suspension fork and preload adjust. So you can preload that spring if you're someone who's a little bit heavier. 30 millimeter stanchions, very good. A little bit thicker, a little bit sturdier and fairly sleek. Like look at the, the color matching and stuff here. It's black, it blends in. Part of me wanted to see white because this is a white frame. They went with black on both and they have the same hub spacing and everything. So this is 100 millimeter standard hub spacing, nine millimeter axle with a quick release gear. In the back, we do not have quick release. It's a hub motor. We don't usually see that. It's actually 152 millimeter hub spacing back here, which is wider than average. Usually it's just 135 or 142. And then they've got this 12 millimeter threaded axle. It's slotted and it's got a little torque washer there. So that just keeps the motor from kind of chewing into this aluminum alloy frame. I love to see that, especially on a higher powered 750 watt motor. I love that the kickstand is far enough back that you don't get pedal lock. You can cycle these back, do some chain lubrication, drive chain maintenance. I love that they've made room for this power cable. It's still got the quick disconnect right there. It leads right into the motor housing, but it's sandwiched between the disc brake rotor and the frame and it just really feels protected. Before, it would kind of like bow out and go directly into the axle over here. And we did have the derailleur guard, but it was just more crowded and more vulnerable if the bike tips. Thicker spokes back here, 12 gauge, black. They tie in with the black motor casing and these beautiful rims. Up front, we got 14 gauge spokes. They don't have to be as thick. There's not as much power and force going into them. You might actually get a little bit more flex there too, which is nice, add a little bit of comfort. But again, this is wider, so you've got this sturdy hub spacing, this sturdy spoke bracing angle. We've got the, the torque washer, 18 millimeter nuts on there. And then the kickstand positioning, there's really not a ton to complain about on these bikes besides being slightly heavier. I mean, 64 and a half pounds, it's not that light for an electric bike. But then again, this is a really high capacity battery pack, 672 watt hours. And then you've got a rack built in and fenders and lights and stuff, that all adds up. This is a spring suspension fork, it's not air. That adds a little bit of weight. So I don't know, you know, it's a trade-off. We got power and we've got a lot of 
utility out of this bike. One of the other big upgrades that I'm excited to talk about here that I've been asking about for quite some time is upgraded brakes, okay? We've, we've usually had mechanical disc brakes on the Rad Power bikes, and those are a little bit easier to adjust yourself as the end consumer but they they require a little bit more hand effort especially the right brake because that cable goes all the way back okay it's just a lot longer it can kind of set in and it can get some water in there and dust and stuff hydraulic is is a big upgrade and it's possibly part of the the price increase three finger adjustable reach levers so you can really dial that in if you have a smaller hand especially for the step through bike but these are not just brakes they also have a motor inhibitor signal and they activate like bright mode for the rear light. So earlier we were showing off the lights. It's gonna be kind of hard to see here, but when I pull the brake, it actually goes bright. So it's even more visible. And there's another button on the bottom here, this little rubber thing. So the rear light also has a blinking mode. That is just phenomenal. Something that very few other e-bike companies offer, especially for such a value priced product. So back to the brakes. They kind of got everything. They work really well. Both of them are easy to actuate. And then we have these large 180 millimeter rotors, front and rear. Wonderful. It gives you a good mechanical advantage. It offers more cooling because there's more surface area. Standard dual piston calipers. And the brand here, Nut, it's like, I haven't really seen that before. Um, but I, you know, I, I get to talk to the product managers and stuff and they're like, well, these are manufactured for us by a facility that manufactures for other brands that I recognize. Can't really say what those are, um, but they're good. You know, they, they, they're doing a good job. Rad is ordering in bulk and they're just refining this whole bike. Some of the other little differences you might notice is that there's this aluminum alloy platform pedal with fixed pins. It looks a lot like the older Welgo ones. I think Rad just started making their own because they were probably having a hard time getting the quantity they needed just because of some of the shortages and stuff. I think these work pretty well. They're a little bit high on the spindle. I, I would appreciate if the whole thing was just flat and the pins were raised, but they give you a good enough surface area. They're gonna definitely an upgrade from plastic. We've got that sealed 12 magnet cadence sensor, much better than the physical, like, you know, non-sealed version that can kind of get bumped out of place. Glad to see that. You can see the wires and everything that are, they're, they're more external and that makes them a bit easier to service, but they're still pretty, pretty hidden and tucked away here. In the past, there was actually like a black box in this portion of the frame, and that was the motor controller. Now the motor controller is inside the down tube, and I'll show you that when we take the battery off in a minute. So having these cables here that are you know, they're they're not super visible. It's not this huge box anymore. I, I feel like it's another area where they've just approved the aesthetic and probably made it a little bit more durable as well. 46 tooth steel chain ring with that nice aluminum alloy bash guard. It's gonna protect the bottom here. Those wires, it's gonna keep them from getting banged up. 170 millimeter cranks. And then you're not gonna lose that chain if you're going over a bouncy terrain. We got this nice, it's kind of a, neoprene slap guard you could adjust. It's gonna keep the paint in good shape. And then back here, we have another protective measure. This is a steel bash guard and it protects the derailleur, especially in shipping, because this comes in a big box. So this isn't gonna get bumped or bent out of place. I like that. Shimano Altus, it's one step up from the base level. I've seen Shimano Acera in the past and I feel like Rad is just, it's probably an inventory thing. Not a huge difference between the two derailleurs. If we look at the shifter, it's the same as before. It's got this button down here and then kind of a big knob up top. A lot of people like it because it's very visual. It's got the different numbers and you can very clearly tell what gear you're in. It's a little bit of reaching for me, but then again, if you're wearing gloves, it's very easy to make the right gear selection. Sometimes if you have trigger shifters down here, they're small and it's just, it's, it can get kind of tricky to, to get to, especially if you're a new rider and you're like, am I shifting up? Am I shifting down? So that the DNP nickel plated seven speed freewheel, not cassette, but this is a custom made freewheel, 11 to 34 tooth, really big range. The 34 tooth ring helps you get started climbing. If you're carrying heavy cargo, it's nice to see that. Sometimes I've seen these like 14 to 28, very limited range. This is good. And again, nickel plated, it's just gonna hold up better over time. I think this would be a good chance to show you the battery. And before I unlock that, I wanna call out and praise that they've got this huge, like quick release knob here or lever. It, it much easier, you're not gonna like hurt your fingers, but you're still gonna be able to really clamp that thing down. I appreciate that, nice to see. Uh, look at where they've positioned the locking core 
up high along with the charging port for the battery. I really appreciate that. I see a lot of bikes, even from name brand manufacturers where all that stuff is way down here at the bottom bracket and it's just right next to the crank arms and it's, I really don't wanna bend way over if I can help it. So part of me wishes it was over on the right hand side of the bike because you see the bike kind of tips to the left when you're using the kickstand. I asked the rad product managers and they said, well, you know, the kickstand holds the bike and we feel like if the bike accidentally tipped, it might tip to this side. So we got the derailleur guard and we just didn't want the key or something to get bent. You do not have to leave the key in while you're operating the bike. It's probably best to take it out. Uh, I appreciate that. And then check it out. There's a little charge level indicator on the battery, 10 bars. So 10% increments in the past, we just saw like five, 20%, it just wasn't as precise. So props to Rad. I mean, they custom designed this. This is aluminum alloy, it's sturdy. It's probably gonna get scratched a little over time or dusty, but I still feel like overall, great choices on that battery and it is cross compatible. So we unlock it and look, it springs right out like this. How nicely this fits into the frame. I really appreciate that. It, it adds a lot of security compared to the older battery design. It was just like a plastic bolt on thing on top of the top tube and the weight was a lot higher. Now it's sunk in, it's a lot sturdier. Again, 7.3 pounds. This is a 48 volt, 14 hour amp hour, 672 watt hour battery pack. They're using Samsung or LG cells. It's great. You know, it's even got kind of a grabbable top that sort of like bulges out. No physical handle, but if they would have done that, it would have been maybe too long to fit in some of your frame bags and stuff. It's still a little oversized, but you know, all in all, did a pretty good job. And there are some really cool accessories for the battery. So I, I wanna show you those for a second here. There's this optional carrying case. So if you're someone who's out on the road, you got a truck or an RV or a plane or something, you, you wanna take the battery off the bike to make it lighter to put on a bike rack or something. Well, you can you can put the battery in a really safe and protected spot here with this, it looks like it's kind of waterproof. We got that sealed zipper. And then they sell this, this is really cool, whoops. It's like a plug to keep the dust and stuff out of the base of the battery bay. So we can just, put this right in like that. And that is awesome. My dad actually has some rad power bikes. He puts them on the back of his RV and they just get dusty. And sometimes he puts a cover and stuff on, but protecting this from, from getting dusty, the leads, I, I, that was really thoughtful. They, they're really going above and beyond with some of these accessories. Of course, they do cost some money and uh, that's understandable too. Clicks in, really satisfying. Gotta love that. One of the other accessories that I glossed over was this USB dongle. Okay, so we've got a full size USB type A, five volt, one amp output right here. That's great, that's enough to power most of the high powered smartphones, iPhones and stuff. And this actually plugs in line with these wires here and it's got a little clip on the back so you can clip it. And yeah, it gets a little cluttered, but I mean, that's a nice option. Before they had the USB built right into the base of the display and there was only one. Now you can daisy chain these up to two. So you could have two USB ports up here, maybe one for a speaker, one for additional lights or something like that. Imagine if you have that tray option and some bags, you could be charging your smartphone, your tablet, all kinds of stuff. And then Rad didn't stop there. They put another outlet back here. So this is where you would plug it in. You can daisy chain two more, and then you can just charge whatever is in this bag or you know basket in the back. I think that is so cool. It's something I've never seen before. Here's the charger. Some of you might not get the orange wire. This is kind of a brand new charger and I think they're they're kind of going through the, the remaining stock on the other ones. It's basically the same thing, two amps. It's actually slightly heavier, 1.3 pounds versus 1.1. I actually heard that they did a lot of testing with the new battery as well to make it just as reliable as possible. Very, you know, it's a safety thing, right? You're shipping bikes around and sending them to people and they're outside. Some of the tips that I've heard about battery care and maintenance is that you wanna keep it at least half full if you aren't riding it. Try to avoid getting below, you know, 10, 20%. Uh, a lot of electric cars and stuff, they balance the battery between 20 and 80% and it helps it last a long time. With an e-bike, it's just, just try not to let it get to zero. And then we are in a, a beautiful warm day. If it gets too hot, the battery cells, the lithium ion cells, they just, you know, they, they do degrade a little bit and you're gonna lose some of that maximum range uh, as when the bike was brand new. Extreme cold is gonna cut your range in half just cause the battery's like cold, you know? And it's like, ah, oh, I'm not gonna go as far. So those are my tips based on some of the experiences I've had. Maybe I'll, I'll jump into the display, but first, look at how delightful that little 
chime is. I love that. They didn't skip the bell before it was integrated into the brake lever. Still got the ergonomic faux leather stitched grips. They feel pretty good. They're not locking, but they, they don't really spin. Um, and you can, you can replace those with like some ergon grips or something if you want to. Lots of accessories, not too expensive. So we'll boot this back up. We got the rad uh, word being spelled out for us. And then in the center here, this is kind of our main console. They're both grayscale and they are backlit. We've got speed in the middle, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Trip time, top left, trip odometer which is like trip distance, and then watts. So as you use the throttle or pedal assist, you can actually see how hard the motor's working and just kind of get some feedback. I think that's really cool. And look how big that is. The miles per hour, it's very readable. And then over here, we have our assist level. So they've split the display up. Instead of packing it all in, making it busy, I, I think that's, that's pretty cool. And we've got these big dedicated buttons with almost like a braille, like a ridge on them. Very intuitive click down, take it to zero. Well, that's gonna turn off pedal assist, but the throttle still works. It gives you full power, so you can ride this thing like a little scooter, and it is, it's sort of a variable speed, so if you twist it a little, you're just gonna get a little bit of power. I, I think that's great. They really empower you with this bike, and then we take it all the way up to assist level five. That's awesome. Here's our battery charge level indicator again. It matches the one on the battery itself. 10 bars, good job, Brad. Dedicated light button, so you can turn the lights off if you want to, and you can actually reduce the brightness of the display. So if you want to do that, if you want to enter the settings, you hold the light and the down button for a few seconds. And now we can set our clock to a 24 hour or 12 hour. Press the light button. We get in here, we can actually set the clock. Light button again, miles per hour, kilometers per hour. Light button again. Now this is where we adjust brightness. We can take it way down to one. It's a lot less bright, but it only does the center. It doesn't do the left display. and. You know, right now it's bright out, so you know they aren't really shining in your eyes. At night, it's like, I, it'd be nice if it did both, but at the end of the day, this one does kind of have like a smoked screen over it. It, it seems like it's doing all right. I rode it last evening and it, it seemed okay. Anyway, if we press the light button, we just, we loop around. Can't adjust the top speed like we could before. You could take it and lower the top speed. Now, if you wanna go slower, just use one of the lower levels of assist. So I'm gonna hold down and light again. We're out of there. If you wanna clear the trip distance and odometer, hold light and a Eventually, after five seconds, it does it. If we if we hold up and down simultaneously, we can go from trip time and trip odometer just to straight up clock and odometer. So that's that's the other little secret. I think everything else is pretty intuitive. On off, you know, dedicated buttons, easy to reach, easy to use. So that's a I think it's a pretty good overview. I've really enjoyed riding this bike, of course, and then seeing what Rad has done and improving on it. At first I thought like, oh, it's just a new battery. But then when I looked closer and I saw the hydraulic disc brakes and stuff, and then, you know, I heard about the price and it was like, okay, you know, this makes sense. I, I, Rad has a bunch of other models. They've got like the Rad Runner and the Rad Mission. They still have some really affordable models. I personally really like this one myself because I, I appreciate the comfort. I'd probably pay more for the suspension seat post upgrade and some of the other cool accessories. Even though it doesn't have bottle cage bosses, they've got a little holster bag thing that you can put a water bottle plus some of your accessories like credit cards and keys, or they just have like a metal cage one. They've also got child seats and stuff, so that's what this is. This is a Yep window, so you can fit the Yep seat on directly in the rack, or they have the Yep one that clamps onto the side. We've got these pannier blockers and bars you can hang stuff off. Here's the pannier that they sell. It's, it's waterproof and it's got these nice clips on the back and Velcro, so when you put it on, it doesn't flap around a whole lot. See, it kind of connects right there, and then you put it between these two bars here. It doesn't slide back and forth. They've just done a really good job. And the fact that they have the step through in the black is really cool, especially if this rear rack is loaded up. Sometimes it's really hard to swing your leg like way up and over, you know, and they, they have managed to lower the top tube on this one. So the standover height's like an inch lower than the, the older Rad City, but it's still, it's still kind of high. So if you're, if you're not a super tall, huge guy, I've been, I've been riding around the step through all day and you can see the seat posts. I'm raised the saddle way up and it's working great for me. So, you know, white is safe, but black is kind of nice if it's a his and her step through setup. Lots of options here. Back at electricbikereview.com, I have a compare tool so you can actually compare like the last generation to this new one and, you know, weigh the pros and cons and get all of the information. You can compare this to some other city models and determine what price point you want. Okay guys, I wanted to do sort of a hill test to kind of put the, the torque measurement to the test and the power. We've got this 
this is a pretty good hill you know this is flat and then this is a, a hill to the right it's gravel we'll see how these tires perform they're they're not quite as like you know hybrid with the checkerboard as before but they seem to offer good traction tom's over here he's gonna take it first go for it Are you on level five i am he's in level five good luck looking good i weigh 135 pounds i'm gonna try to make it up just with the throttle right here okay so here we go Bumpier than I was expecting. <laughs> no problem. Made it up just with the throttle. That was that was impressive. Yeah. It's pretty stable. A little bit to the left because I got a pannier. dry. I can feel a little bit of water splash up but kind of on my shins. I'm wearing shorts but I, th I think it covered, I think it did a pretty good job. Definitely keeping my back clean and I'm not getting anything flicking up to my face so that's good. I'm going to pedal along in assist level five so that the motor is as powerful as it gets so you can hear this thing and it's going to start and stop really quickly but i want you to look at my pedal strokes and then kind of time that with what you hear to get an idea of how the how the motor responds how the motor controller is set up um, i'm going to stow the kickstand also keep keep your ears perked for the the fenders for the kickstand anything else that could be making noise while we ride just so you know what it sounds like It's definitely zippier than the older Rad City. It's pretty quiet from a motor standpoint, but I do hear the, the kickstand kind of bouncing around when I go off-road a little bit. Hey, so we're back at the headquarters here and I'm hanging out with Tom and asking him to hold the camera. Just kind of neat to see this place. I wanted to give you the third person view, so here we go. See the brake light down there? the seat raised pretty high so I can get that that good leg extension but I can also still put a foot down like this I can easily hop forward I, I like the step through pretty well and the white color is actually really visible so as it becomes evening time you got the lights on and you got the reflective sidewall stripes it's all it's a lot of good features well guys as always I've had a blast checking out these bikes it's been fun to to visit and get to just go deep on them. There's so much that's been changed and improved. I really respect Rad as a company. I feel like they offer the good customer support. And again, these bikes are some of my favorites. They're not like super big and heavy like some of the fat tire bikes. And those are great if you're riding in sand or something. But for a lot of people, it's just cruising around the city or whatever. You got your comfort, you got your utility. The style I think has been improved. The range has been improved. They're great products. I have measured everything on both bikes, the length, the width, the height, the standover height, just everything I could to help you out. I also have some forums and of course the comments. And the idea there is I love to get your feedback. I'm looking at brand new bikes. The batteries aren't rattling. Nothing's wrong with these bikes. They work great, but I, I genu genuinely want to help. I love you. I hope you have fun out there riding. Enjoy the, the good weather and friends and family, and we'll see you next time.